Hi, I'm Ken Ellison from Ellison Machine Shop. You all know me, I'm your engine guy. And today, as promised, we're going to start with our first video, uh, part one in a series of videos that we're going to give you all of our tips, tricks, and techniques that we use here in the shop to install a, a properly install a camshaft and make all the necessary adjustments to have it in timed and tuned and the valves adjusted so that when you get your engine together that you can feel completely and totally confident that everything is right and give yourself the best degree of success. If you've been following my, my last three videos, then you know that we've been talking about uh, extreme epidemic type proportion cam and lifter failure. You also know if you've been following my videos that I lay it squarely on the uh, man lifter manufacturers. Uh, not, not the companies that box them up and sell them, but the lifters manufacturers themselves. So uh, if you want to know more about that, you're going to have to go back and watch the last three videos. We're, we don't have time to go through all that. But what I do want to say is that there's a whole lot of guys who feel very vindicated that I came out with those videos because their engines have went up and now they, they feel like it's not their fault. And in all honesty and complete certainty, uh, there's a lot of dead cam and lifters out there just like there always are from guys who uh, improperly installed their engines. Uh, install their cam and lifters. There's a lot of clearances. There's a lot of information. Uh, we're going to cover all of it. We're going to we're going to go through and we're going to talk. We're going to talk about starting with the bare block. We're going to go through checking lifter bores. We're going to talk about straightness of camshafts. We're going to talk about degreeing, push rod length, rocker arm geometry, valve adjustment and preload, proper break-in procedures, and of course, uh, couldn't make it complete without uh, proper uh, oil and uh, ZDP type additives, thoughts and ideas on those, and, and all, all the lubricants, we're, we, we have, we're gonna talk about it all. What we're not doing is I'm, uh, today we're gonna, I have a big block Chevy that I'm gonna demonstrate on. Uh, this big block Chevy uh, is from a longtime friend and customer, Earl Ross, uh, that we're getting ready to uh, put together. So we have a bare block that's uh, relatively clean that we're getting ready to do some final steps on. So we're, I'm going to demonstrate and we're going to talk about this engine in general. But this is not a video to teach you how to put a cam in a big block Chevy. This is, this is a video to get your mind right. This is a video that's going to give you information so that every time you work on an engine, you will have the same principles that you know I say it over and over our tips tricks and techniques you're going to use the same the same methods all the time doesn't matter if it's a, a, a Mitsubishi or or a, a Honda or a, a, a Hemi whatever it is whatever you're working on whether it's something common something antique or something something brand new high-tech I'm going to show you all the same methods that I use now the thing is is we're trying we're trying to get you to learn how not to be an engine assembler this is not a connect the dots video i'm not going to say oh this is a big block chevy do this 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 and this i'm going to teach you methods that will transfer over into other applications along with your own common sense and of course if you've been in business like i have for years and you got experience to back it up but if you have the basic common sense uh mechanical aptitude when and and learn some learn some basic principles here and know what to look for doesn't matter what the name what what brand engine you're working on you you, sh you should be able to do this with with a reasonable degree of success we went many many years as an engine builder that i only did one fifth or may, maybe even one tenth of what i do now to make sure that uh cam and lifters are properly installed and I, I did so with a high degree of success. I had almost no camshaft failures in the first 20, 25 years of being in, in, being in business. And you may not believe that, but that's the truth. Now we know cam and lifter products have changed here over the past couple of years. That's, that's another conversation. So we've stepped up uh, our methods and you need to step up your methods too to make sure the things, are, the things go together proper. So like all, like all videos, uh, we're, we're trying to teach you how to be an engine builder, not an engine assembler. We don't put, if you're putting engines together, and I don't care how many you've done, if you've been successful with it and you're not checking the things that I've been teaching you, like on uh, our video on tolerance stack, if you are just merely assembling engines without knowing exactly what the clearances are, 
Uh, if you're taking, if you're assembling something and you're taking it for granted, what, what your machinist had told you and you're putting it together without verifying, if you're installing uh, valve springs without knowing whether or not what the, uh, whether or not they're they're binding or buying cylinder heads that are finished and you're putting them on because quote unquote they got a 600 lift spring on them without taking it apart and verify it you're an engine assembler you're not an engine builder and guys in my field the reason engines cost so much more money than a simple crate engine is that we don't take these things for granted we're not running them down an assembly line we're not, we're not putting things together that, that are not completely and, and totally uh, proven, double check, triple check. You know, you know the, old, the old carpenter saying, you know, measure twice and uh, cut once. So that applies here to engines more, more than ever. So I'm going to try to keep these videos a little shorter. They've been dragging out. But before I get there, and we're going to go right into that in just a moment, I just want to say that this has been some of the most intelligent conversations that I ever had on the internet. Of course, that by itself doesn't mean a whole lot. But in all honesty, I have, ever since the lifters started going up, I have, I've had the pleasure of talking to a lot of really intelligent people. Um, some of, some of uh, the guys that I spoke to are professionals, and some of them are just novice. But we've had some great conversations, and we started off, we did one video. And the, con and the conversation was so intelligent and so many good questions, I did a second. And then after that, I was forced to do a third because we had some opposing views. And I just, I wanted to, I wanted to be as complete as possible. So we're going to stop with that here. But, but we're, we have several, I have several episodes here that we're going to go through. And I have no doubts in my mind when some of you, when some of you guys uh, add some information and some comments and some phone calls, I will probably be modifying a little bit of what I do here uh, to answer all questions because um, I like doing this one at a time like this. Uh, I believe that we're all smarter together than we are individually. That's something my pastor used to say all the time. And um, it's, it's really great to get other people's perspective. That's the one thing about social media, media I, I absolutely love. Um, but let's, let's, let's keep our comments, let's keep our comments um, productive. Uh, that, that's just something I ask. Please, please keep them productive. Let's, you know, we, we don't need to talk about things that are unimportant. This is, this is a lot of work to do this. So, all right, guys. The first thing that I do on every single engine job. Now, this is going to jump ahead of some of you because some of you guys are doing nothing more than maybe taking your pickup truck and pulling the cam out and, and putting in a RV camshaft. And this is how we know that we're having lifter problems in the industry. It's an industry issue because you got a lot of guys that are putting in a simple camshaft that is made to work with the stock, uh, the stock uh, valve springs and valve train. So they're pulling out basically a camshaft that's supposed to be plug and play and putting them in, boom, 15, 20 minutes, they're dead. So if you are going to uh, be doing just a camshaft swap, you're going to have to hang in here for a while till we get up to that point. Because right now we're going to start and we're going back to the very beginning of how we build an engine in a shop when I got a bare block. And as stated, I have a block right here and I have this here. Uh, like I said, this belongs to one of my, my friends and customers, Earl Ross. We have a big block Chevy. Now, I start off with a clean block. I've In my video, I've talked to you about clean means clean. We go through uh, the clean means clean video is very detailed about how, how much, uh, all, all, the, all the extra effort that we put into hand scrubbing and making sure that things are, are proper. Now, this particular block right now is just like it comes out of the hot tank and so forth. It's been hand scrubbed on a little bit. This has been hot tanked several times, and I consider it to be filthy dirty. By the time I'm ready to assemble this engine, I'll have an hour and a half to two more hours in it. I go through deburn. Deburn is hitting all the machine surfaces, uh, flat file, and making sure there's no little pieces of metal that are hanging off anywhere that'll come off and go into the engine later. I'm going to chase all the bolt holes. I'm going to thoroughly clean it. We can't talk about proper camshaft insulation if you don't know your oil system is in top-notch condition. You also have to build the engine in such a way that we're not picking up debris in the engine. A lot of people say, oh, that engine's clean. But yet, when that engine comes apart 
and I've seen this many, many times. I have literally asked customers who came back to my shop and throw up some bearings in the crankshaft on my on my workbench, and I probably shouldn't say it like that, but I've looked at it and said, well, "Did you build this on the? Did you build this engine on the beach?" I mean, it's so torn up, it's not funny. But but you have to you have to get it spotless, and. What we do is we start off. We start off with the hand cleaning process. We're going to wash it all down. Uh, we're, it's going to use uh, multiple cleaners all the way down to something to the equivalent of like Dawn dishwashing liquid. I will use white towels. I will go up and down the cylinders, and I do. I use towels that are lint free, so don't don't start with that. I go through and I wipe out the cylinders until they're clean. I, I go over. I scrub every part of it, like just like just like you're washing the outside of your car. I hand scrub the outside of the block, inside of the block. I got brushes that run from one end to the other that look like uh, gun barrel cleaning brushes. I got old galley brushes. I scrub a block. If you're assembling an engine and you're putting it together exactly the way your machine shop hands it back to you, you're, you're, you're once again, you're doing it on faith that it's clean. Now, you might have the greatest machine shop in the world, but you're still doing it on faith. If they miss something, it's on you. Don't blame them. It's on you. It's when I assemble an engine, I don't care if the manufacturer made lifters that are defective. If it comes apart, it's my fault. I got to handle it. I got to eat it. Okay, so here on the engine, big block Chevrolet, the very first thing that I do on every engine, and I do this, I take an engine and I start right here with an oil pump and an oil pump pickup screen. Now, I do this to keep myself sharp. I do this to uh, I do this to verify that the engine is clean, but I also do it to keep myself very sharp um, where, where how the oil goes through an engine. Now, this big block Chevy, I know this like the back of my hand, and I know exactly how this oil, these oil passages work. And, uh, uh, but I trace the oil, and I start off with saying, okay, the oil goes into the oil pump. We know that. So the oil goes through the pump. It goes into the pickup screen. It goes into the pump. The pump drives the oil through the hole in the base into the main cap. Every single engine I do this with, it doesn't. It doesn't matter what. It doesn't matter the manufacturer. I, I trace, I trace the the oil system through, looking for rust, looking for misalignment. Uh, on some engines, up around, up around where the, the the cam holes are. Sometimes there's, there's oil holes in main bearings that don't, that, that don't exactly align. I can go in there and chamfer those holes or chamfer the block so that it gets proper oiling. Uh, certain engines, like here is an oil filter adapter on a small block Chevy, sometimes on, on Fords or Chryslers. They're made different. They come out the block and, and then there's an the oil pump sets off to the side. I take each and every one of them and I make sure that where the oil passages are and how they mount to the block, that everything lines up perfectly. Sometimes I go in there and I open up oil holes. Now, I like to say, and this for a lot of you guys, probably sounds a little unprofessional or you may want to disagree, but you know, you got to remember we're talking about all engines, not anything in specific, even though I got a big block Chevy in my hands. Some engines, most engines, have a decent oil system on them. You don't usually have to go in when you're building a street rod engine and reinvent a wheel on oil systems. Uh, correct them, clean them, uh, high volume oil pump, a good, a good oil pump pickup screen, a good oil pan, solves most of your problems. But that's something that for a later date as well. That's something you have to be more application specific. But most of the time you don't have to go in and get real crazy, even though all of us guys have an overwhelming tendency to want to modify everything. Because that's what we do. That's why we love cars. But we start off I take my oil pump and I take my oil pump apart. I take my oil pump apart. I take the, the gears. I use some uh, emery cloth, like, like around 320, something nice and fine. I go around the outside of all my gears. I make sure everything's deburred. I couldn't begin to put a number on how many oil pumps I've taken apart. And in a 42 year career, I might have had 10 of them that were messed up. I've had two or three that wouldn't even turn. Um, I, I found them with rust in them. I found them with uh, metal shavings in them. It's really, really rare. But if that one's yours, that's a big deal. So I take it completely apart. I go through it. I remove, when I can, I remove the, the oil pump, I mean, the, the oil pressure relief valve. 
It's a little plunger with a spring. I remove that, I wash it, I clean it. I put it together with, back together with hands that are spotless. I, 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 I pride myself, and you've probably heard me say this before, when I'm building an engine, I try to keep my hands so clean that I could put orange gel on my fingers and apply it to my grandson's gums when, it, when, he, when he's crying because he's teething. I keep my hands spotless. I personally, and you don't have to take my advice on this, I don't like wearing gloves because when, you know, I see so many guys on here, you know, you, you, your BMW kind of guy with the white coat and the, the rubber gloves technician kind of dude. Sorry if you like BMWs. I like BMWs too. I don't like that kind of, I'm, I'm, I'm an engine builder. I don't care if I get oil on my hands. I try to eliminate things that are really toxic, but if I wear rubber gloves, I can't feel dirt like I can with my bare hands. So I keep my hands clean, I keep my tools spotless, I go through my oil pump, the oil pickup screen has to go on, and I, if it's a pressed on screen, we press them on, we TIG weld them, and we do that with the pump open because we don't want nothing being pumped into the engine. That, you know, I, you, Everybody thinks sometimes, or a lot of people think that, you know, the filter is going to pick it all up, but it just doesn't. Sometimes debris makes its way through a pump and through an engine. So we do everything we can to keep it clean. On a pickup screen like this here, I just had a customer who was telling me a, a, a phone call over the Internet that he's got one that's all clogged up and how he beat on it and knocked all the crud out of it and put it back on his engine. Well, he's got the engine all together, so it doesn't much matter. But if I have a pickup screen that I can't locate, I will go in here with a pair of like wire cutters, like dykes, and open this up and pry this little lip over, take the centerpiece out, take the screen out, thoroughly wash it, I'll put in my glass beater, I'll glass bead it, it'll be washed again, it'll be assembled, I'll crimp this back over, I'll completely take this pickup screen apart, rebuild it, and put it back together, and it takes me over an hour to do that. And that's why we replace every pickup screen, but if I can't get one, I, I just can't, I just can't uh, emphasize enough Clean means clean. You have to get this stuff spotless. You're, you can't sit back and blame your engine failure on nobody else if you skip this step. So make sure we got a pickup screen. If it's a pressed on screen, press, TIG weld it, then the pump is properly deburred, clean, and, and assembled. When I put the last three screws in, I'll put one drop of blue, and I set a drop, a little tiny drop of blue Loctite on the on the bolts properly torque it. I put uh, something inside the uh, assembly lube inside the pump. That's the equivalent of like a STP oil treatment, something thick, and that helps it to pick up. I've done that on every engine, man, since I was a kid with great success. I trace, I trace the oil system. I can't say this enough. You will be a you will become a much much better engine builder if you go through and trace where the oil goes and watch it and, and understand how the oil system actually works. I not only trace it on every job, when I'm back in my assembly room right here by myself, sometimes I do it out loud and I'll say the oil's in the pump that goes through here blah, blah, and I'll trace it. And then I pull out my inspection light and there's oil galleys in the engine and I get down and I look through every one and I get in there with brushes such as this and these and different different course some some are some are more wire some are more some are nylon that i can get in and scrub out anything any rust any debris any burrs any cast and flash if it's got cast and flash i grind all that mess off i get in i, I can get in there and look and make sure that my oil passages are clean i have a gun barrel cleaning brush that goes all the way through the oil galleys that go from front to back but here's here's what you have to do you, you just go through and you physically look Oil comes in through the pickup screen. Uh, it goes through the pump. When it goes through the pump, then it's pushed, it's pushed through this hole in the cap. This hole in the cap will go through to the hole in the block. Then there's a straight, then on this particular one, there's a hole here. And this hole here, you say, well, what that's for? That's just a machining hole. That's where, when they drilled it, they had to, they had to come in from someplace. Because when the main cap goes, I mean, main, main bearing goes over top of this particular application, it's gonna cover that, it's gonna cover that spot up. But that's just a passage that, allow, that allows a passage to go through to the oil filter to intersect with the one that comes from the cap. That's basic common sense, guys. You can figure those things out. You don't need somebody to tell you that kind of stuff. You don't need a video. You don't need a book. You have got to be able to look at this stuff and figure that out on your own. 
It's not rocket science. I've said over and over, building an engine is not the hardest thing in the world to do. It's one of the easiest things to mess up. Now, when the oil comes through here, the oil comes into a housing. Now here, this is two bolts normally hold this, this oil filter adapter on. And whether your oil filter adapter is mounted here like a Chevrolet or externally like a, a Pontiac or an Oldsmobile or, or such, or whether it's up front off the timing cover like, like so many other engines, Buicks and so forth, it's all one and the same. So the oil is going to come through. It's going to come through being pushed out of the pump. So as of right now, the oil has only been filtered through the screen. The screen's got, the screen's got gaps in it. Uh, it has to be. It, it, it lets debris through. So then at that point, your filter, which screws on, which screws on to the adapter that's mounted to the block, the oil comes in, and the oil is pushed into the holes that are, around, that are on the outside here. And then that oil goes on the outside of the, of the filter and is forced through the inside of the filter and then back through the center port. Well, that center port is right here, and that center port is tied to an oil galley on this particular engine that goes from front to back. And it goes all the way through, and you have to look, because a lot of times there's plugs front and back. On some engines, you have the way they machine things. There can even be a plug. There can be a hole that has a plug, but further back, a half inch back or an inch back, there might be another plug in there. So you might have a plug inside a plug. You have to do your due diligence and check this stuff out. This stuff that I'm telling you right now is can be you can be totally self-taught most of this. I have. Uh, what I'm telling you right now is not something that I've read over and over in magazines or I had my mentors teach me. I, I actually was in business for myself at the age of 17. So my mentors only were in my life for, you know, the guys who actually taught me to grind my first valve and build my first engine. They were only there for a very brief time. That's a, that's a whole other story. But you can teach yourself this if you try. So after the oil goes through the pump and it's pushed into the filter, then it comes out and technically it's supposed to be clean. We're, hoping, we're praying to God that our filter picks up everything. And then it goes into the main galley on this particular engine. And on this one here, you have five main bearings. One, two, three, four, five. That's where your crank sits. And there, off, that, off that main hole is, is, a, is a spot here on each one of these where it comes through the main galley and it feeds down to the, to the main. And off this main, it intersects and goes down and feeds the cam bearings. So you can sit here and trace this, and you can just, in your mind, just like if this was just like water, you're turning on a hose. You can, uh, you can see where the water runs through pipes and things like that in your house. You can figure out where the water comes in, where the water goes out. You can figure out where the oil goes in and where the oil comes out. If you're not willing to do this, you're never going to be an engine builder. You know how many big block and small block Chevrolets I have done this to? Pretty much all of them. I go through because as I do this and I visualize where my oil passes, I know the block is clean. So I go through each one of them. Uh, on the back on this particular one, we have a place where in the back cam bearing that the oil goes down with two galleys that you can't see from here. And it goes down to each one of the, the long galleys that go from front to back in the block that feed all your lifters. So then the oil after it passes through all those places, then it goes to your lifters. Then from the lifters, it goes through your push rods. Then it goes up to your rocker arms. On some engines, uh, there's spots where the oil actually goes through the block, through the cylinder head, up to a rocker shaft. So once again, we're not trying to do this to make to tell you uh, an exact way of building your engine. We're trying to make you accept responsibility for your own rebuild. As I said earlier, I honestly, guys, I've given a lot, a, a lot of people who have done a poor job. Now, I'm not trying to pick on nobody. You know, I say it all the time. I'm, I'm the last guy in the world who tries to be condescending to anybody who's taking their time to pay attention and to tune in on my videos. I don't try to be condescending to nobody. But a lot of you guys, I made feel better by telling you that the lifters are bad when it was your own fault. If you're not willing to do these type of things, then, I, you know, to me, I just, I would never look at you as an engine builder. I personally have built more engines than I can put numbers on. I've been responsible for three, four, five times that many more engines with all the guys in my shop over the years have assembled engines that I'm overseeing and watching and designing and making sure that things go smooth. If I'm willing to do this, I think you should be willing to do this too. 
So that's pretty much a wrap on this section. Proper block uh, preparation, cleaning, deburring, uh, alignment, making sure that all the oil holes, uh, all the bearings, everything looks good. Follow the oil flow. Because one of the situations we're having is we're also having lifters that are bleeding down. So if you go through and you chase your oil system and you know everything is perfect from front to back and there's no debris in it and there's no uh, obstructions and those lifters are bleeding down, we can pretty well say, feel very safe to say we have a lifter problem. It's not, it's not, uh, it's not a builder's, it's not the builder's uh, fault. It's, it's a lifter issue and then it's easier to address. So on the next videos, we're going to start talking about we're going to get in to start talking about cam, uh, proper cam bearing installation and, uh, and then we're going to go into checking the camshaft. So uh, we're going to be trying to release one a week. Uh, if you like these videos, you can really help me out a lot by sharing and liking and please constructive comments. Thanks guys. See you soon.